Micronesia, the Federated States of Micronesia, FSM for short. Population, 105,000. An archipelago in the Western Pacific, south of Guam, extending across nearly 2,000 miles of ocean. 607 islands, ruled by four different powers in one century, between 1886 and 1986. Spain, Germany, Japan, and the U.S. At the end of the Spanish-American War, the islands passed from Spain to Germany. Voices in Washington suggesting annexation of the islands to support the new U.S. naval base on Guam were ignored. At the outbreak of World War I, Japan seized the islands. For 20 years prior to World War II, Japan administered them as a League of Nations mandate. Then, as war with the U.S. approached, Japan fortified the islands for use as forward bases against Allied positions. In the final years of the war, the U.S. retook the islands one by one at a cost of 32,000 American casualties. Twice the U.S. had let the islands slip from its hands, first after the Spanish-American War, then again after World War I. Never again would this happen, the U.S. resolved. So the U.S. occupied the islands under a United Nations trusteeship, lasting from the end of the war to 1986, 40 years of U.S. administration. But the post-war years were an era of widespread aspirations for independence. The old colonial age was over. After long negotiations with the U.S. lasting 14 years, the FSM fashioned a compact providing for free association with the U.S. The people of the Federated States of Micronesia on June 21st approved the compact of free association with the United States by a majority vote of 79%. That should tell the world that we know who we are and that we have mastered the course of our own destiny. Although the FSM is recognized as virtually independent, the compact provides for a special relationship with the U.S., guaranteeing long-range U.S. security interests in the area. This is a, an agreement which is very much in the interest of the United States. Strategically, uh, this agreement gives us the right of strategic denial so that we are in a position for the rest of time to prevent any foreign power from establishing a military presence in Micronesia without our consent. That is an extraordinary concession made by the Micronesians and a very real achievement for the United States. The islands were to continue to be a bulwark against the threat of the Soviet Union as they had been from the beginning of the Cold War. Today, opinion is divided. Now that the Cold War is over, we just don't need the islands anymore. Others remember the voice of history. Never again will the U.S. yield control of these islands. In the meantime, the FSM has been hard at work creating a new nation. In 1975, 10 years before the signing of the Compact of Free Association, the FSM designed its new constitution. Since then, the nation has maintained a participatory government with legislatures and national congress elected by popular vote. In forming its political system, Micronesians tried to strike a balance between traditional elements of their Micronesian cultures and the democratic safeguards that are vital to a modern nation. We are blessed with national and state constitutions which provide our basic governmental structure. Over a period of almost 20 years now, we have gained confidence in our system of government. Progress has been much slower on other fronts. The schools and hospitals still fall far short of FSM's expectations. 
With the aid of U.S. money, new clinics have been built everywhere in Micronesia. But they are often poorly supplied and medicines run short. We have come a long way uh, from the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and even 90s right now in uh, uh, meeting uh, some of the challenges that any healthcare model, especially a modern or a Western model, uh, in providing services to our people. Uh, we also have barriers. Uh, some of these are just the fact that we uh, are um, uh, geographically isolated. Uh, resources are not always there. Uh, medical uh, urgent message uh, to Yapasra Mariri. The health system has had some success in dealing with the diseases rampant in the 1940s when the U.S. took over the islands. TB, leprosy, gastrointestinal diseases, but new non-communicable diseases, aided by an unhealthy diet and lifestyle, have become increasingly common. Heart disease, diabetes, and stroke pose the new threats to the health of Micronesians. Standards in the schools are not what they should be. Classroom buildings have been constructed, even in the remote outer islands. New teachers have been recruited, and programs have been added to the academic curricula. But test scores remain lower than they ought to be. But well, we still have a long way to go uh, in terms of uh, uh, training our teachers to be qualified to provide uh, good instruction and ensuring that learning is taking place in our uh, public school system. How does a new nation convert a traditional subsistence economy to a modern market economy in a few years time? Especially when it has been dependent on government for just about everything for so long. They send us to school so we'll grow up and work for the government and have uh, helped our government, including our family. The government is the biggest uh, employer on the island. In the last three years, the number of government jobs has been cut by 20%. Private sector employment now surpasses government employment for the first time. The FSM is trying, but it's not easy. We have to develop the productive sector. Um, and so the grant that we get under the compact is really designed to uh, acknowledge that we will develop the private sector. Of course, we, we have not done very well, but uh, the intention is there. Development takes time and patience and trial and error. And of course, it always depends on market opportunities. What we're exporting right now are uh, primarily loins. You know, loins being the whole chunk of fish. There are very few people who are able to produce a frozen tuna steak which is attractive to the United States marketplace. I feel that we have a very good chance in the growth of tourism because here we're known to the world for our diving. So that's where we're focusing on, but we're also looking into the fishing, sports fishing. We cannot go wrong with promoting the tourism in the islands. FSM is proud of its independence. It has taken initiatives and is gaining a new sense of ownership over its government, something new after a century of colonial rule. It will make mistakes in the future, as it has in the past, but it will keep trying. The United States government is preparing to negotiate future assistance to us. But we have been a self-governing people since 1979, even some years before the trusteeship was formally terminated. Therefore, it remains up to us to define our own concept of a preferred future. FSM is proud of its long relationship with the U.S. 
a relationship that began in the battlefields of World War II, was strengthened during the 40-year trusteeship and has continued through the Compact of Free Association even to the present. Although now an independent nation, FSM looks forward to its continuing relationship with the U.S.